Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at the notorious and intimidating grouping by in Java streams. And as we'll see, it's really pretty straightforward, especially if you already kind of know what you're doing with streams. So to start with, I'm going to need some data to work on here. And what I think I want to demonstrate this is some person objects where I've got a person class which just has a name, an age, and a height. And to do that quickly, since I'm using Java 16, I can use the record keyword and I can just type record person. Let's put some brackets there and we'll give this a string name, an int age and an int height. So if you are using an earlier version of Java and you want to replicate this and you've not got the record keyword, you could just define a person class, give it these attributes and then define get methods for each of these and a two string method as well would be useful. And as we've seen, I think in the last tutorial, record by default will, will do all that and it will create get methods for each of these, which will have the same name as the fields. So let's create a few records that we can use here just as sample data. I'm going to do var people equals list dot off. We'll just put them in a list and let's start off with maybe just two. So I'm going to have new person. Let's call him Bob and give him an age of 52 and a height of 182. And we'll have someone else in there as well. Let's have Claire, who is 46, just off the top of my head. And I'll make her 170 centimeters high. And I'm going to put that bracket somewhere a little bit nicer. So we can easily create a stream from this. Let's say var results, because I'm going to group this, let's call it results one, equals people.stream. And we're going to use collect because what we're looking at here is basically collectors that are predefined. They're part of the collectors class. And here I've got the Java documentation version 16 for the collectors class. Specifically, we're going to look at grouping by, and we can see the simplest version of it right here just accepts some kind of function to use as a classifier and we'll see what that is and there are no other parameters so let's start by using the simplest version of grouping by now rather than write collectors over and over again i'm going to use a static import as i've done previously let's say import static and this is extremely common java.util.stream.collectors.star so now we can use any method of collectors without prefixing it with collectors. And here I'm going to use grouping by, the grouping by method of collectors. And what we want to group by, let's say we want to group by name. So I'm going to say person colon colon name. And it is important to realize that this is not referring to a field. The fields are going to be private by default anyway. This is the name of the get method that returns the attribute that you want to group by. So this is a method reference, as we've seen in the last video. Let's take a look already at what we get from this. So I'm going to do sysout and results1. And it's going to return the results in a map. Here we can see that grouping by puts items in a map with the things that you group by as the keys in the map. So the classifier here is just specifying what the keys in the map are going to be. And then for each map key, we have a value, which by default is just a list. It's a list of items with matching keys, essentially. So let's say I have another Bob in here. Let's duplicate him and create a younger Bob. Let's make him taller as well. This Bob is just better in every way. <laughs> That's just a joke. And let's run this. And now we can see that for the Bob key in the returned map, we've got both Bobs now in a list. So that's pretty simple, but probably most often what you want to do with grouping by is you want to produce some kind of statistics for the items that you've grouped. So let's say we want to know how many are in each group, for example. Let's copy this, duplicate it, and change results one to results two. So as we can see, if we check the documentation. We've got versions of grouping by that accept not only the classifier, which says basically what the keys in our map are going to be, but we've also got collectors, which then specify exactly how we want to collect together 
the items for each key in the map. So what the default grouping by is basically doing is this. We can write to list here, and that's basically the same as what we've already got by default. It's just putting the items in each group into a list. But let's say, for example, we want a count of how many people there are in each group. Instead of writing to list, we could write counting, which we've seen in the last video. It's just another method of the collector's class. So it's something that implements the collector interface and is a collector. And if I run this now, we just get a count of how many people are in each group. So again, we're returning a map and this is telling us we've got one Claire and we've got two Bobs. We've now got all kinds of different collectors that we could potentially use to create statistics about these people. So for example, if we want their average age, here we could write averaging int since the age is just integers. And we have to specify here what we actually want to create the average for, and that's going to be age. Again, this is a method reference. Let's call this results three. And now we can get the average age of each person in each group. So grouping by isn't the only pre-made collector in the collector's class that allows you to specify another collector as the second argument but it's probably the one that it's most common to do this kind of thing with, where we, we've got a collector right here, and the second argument that we're using is itself a collector. Now, what if we want to group by a second field? So for example, let's imagine that we've got two clairs here, which have the same age, and they've got different heights. And let's imagine I want to produce counts for people who have particular names and ages for some strange reason. So we want a second level of grouping. That's just as easy as you might imagine. Let's duplicate this and create results four. And I'm gonna to try to arrange this in some kind of way that's somewhat readable as much as possible. So let's maybe put things on different lines a little bit here. Try to keep it kind of organized in some sort of a way. So this bracket belongs to grouping by. So we can have a second grouping by here. We can group on, for example, age. Let's say grouping by on age. And if we run this, by default, what we're gonna get is items added to a list, of course. So we're grouping by the name. So names are gonna be the keys in the map that's returned. But now each value in the map that's returned is itself going to be another map. And the keys in that map are going to be the ages, as we can see. The values in that map are going to be a list of all the people in that group. So for example, in the map that's returned, we've got a key Claire because we specified that with the first grouping by. And then because we've got two Claire's who are 46 years old, the second grouping by, which is grouping on age, is going to give us a map which has 46 as one of its keys and under 46 it's going to have both of the clairs who are 46 years old so we know that all of these people right here are all going to be called Claire and are all going to be 46 years old and if we just want a count of each person in each group of course we could easily do that or we could create the average age or the maximum age in each group just using another method of collectors one of the methods that we've already seen, and there are quite a few of them. So for example, we could write here, again, let's try to organize it some kind of a way that makes it kind of readable. And let's write here counting, so that we just get a count of all the people in each group. And then we get this map returned. So it has, as keys, it has the names, and each value in this top level map is itself a map, which has ages as the keys and then we just for the values in those maps we have a count of how many people are in each group so if you saw the last video i kind of raised the question why do we need collector versions of things that we've already seen why do we need counting when we've got count and you can see why that is now because in this case with counting we want to count the number of people in each of the groups that we've created with grouping by. That's one example of how we might use it. But what about other methods like mapping and filtering? Let's take a look at another couple of examples where we need the collector version 
of something that we already have a intermediate stream version of. So let's go back up to this example here where we're just grouping people by name. I'm going to copy this down here so I can modify it and we'll call this results six. So let's imagine that we want to group people by name, but then for all of the people in each group, we just want to collect their ages in a list. So that implies that we need some kind of mapping. Let's try to format this a little bit more nicely. So if you do plan on using multiple different levels of collectors, then I would say you really have to try to think really hard about how to make this look nice uh, and maybe consider using tags to turn your formatter off if you need to do that, if you're using an auto formatter which doesn't format this stuff very well, because otherwise it's just going to get unreadable really quickly. But so the challenge now is we want to group people by name. Okay, so we've already got that bit, that bit's fine. But then what we want to do is collect all their ages into a list instead of averaging the ages of people. How would we do that? Well, if what we want to collect together at the end is not people, but their ages, well, that kind of implies we need some kind of mapping. So let's use the mapping collector. And then we could use a lambda expression like this to map each person to their age. We could write p arrow p dot and then the get method for age, which is just called age in this case. And then we could use the to list collector to collect these into a list. So if I run this and we take a look at what we've got, now we've got a map being returned because we've got grouping by. And for each name, we've got as the values in that map, we've got a list containing the ages of the people in that group. A simpler way to do this, slightly simpler, is instead of this lambda expression, we could of course just write person age in here. And as we've seen, that is exactly equivalent. So we couldn't have achieved this using a map as an intermediate stream operation, as we've seen previously, because then if we'd mapped all the people in the stream to their ages, we couldn't then have grouped them by name. And this is why we need collector versions of intermediate or terminal stream operations because they do allow us to do things that we just couldn't do if we stuck to the versions of the operations that we've previously seen in this course. Let's take a look at one more example where we really need the collector version of the stream operation. Let's take a look at an example with filtering. So I'll duplicate this and we'll create result seven. And let's imagine that we want to group our people by name again, and then we want to filter out everyone who is taller than 180 centimeters. So if our intention was to simply eliminate everyone who's taller than 180 centimeters from the stream as a whole, we just weren't interested in them, then we could do that with an intermediate filter operation as we've already seen in this course. But maybe what we want is we want to group everyone by name. And then if there is no one with that name who is less than 180 centimeters. Maybe we want to record zero by that name to say so. So we don't want to completely ignore the people who are taller than 180. So it's no good using an intermediate filter. We just want to filter them out of the results at the end, but then record that we have zero people, for example, with the name Bob, who are shorter than 180. Let's take a look at that. So we want to group by name, and then we can use filtering which we've already seen in this course. So if you're following the course through, you're already familiar with filtering. And then we can say p arrow p dot height or get height or whatever you've called the get method is less than 180. So we're only interested in those people, let's say. And let's collect these people into lists. So now if we run this, what we've got is we've got lists of people. So we didn't map them to their ages. Each value in the map is a list of people, but notice the list for Bob, although Bob exists as a key in the map, which it wouldn't have if we'd filtered out all the people less than 180 with an intermediate stream operation, but he just refers to an empty list. And what we could do here, which is maybe easier to understand, is put counting in, in there. 
And then if we run this, now we've got counts of all the people who are less than 180 centimetres grouped by their name. So we've got two people called Claire that are less than 180 centimetres. We've got zero people called Bob that are less than 180 centimetres. So we'll leave it there for this video. One thing that you see a lot if you look at examples of this in documentation is although I've sort of leaned towards using lambda expressions a lot here, of course our, our lambda expressions could be method references instead where you just put the logic that's in the lambda expression into a method. So you might see quite a bit of that going on. I think that's worth mentioning. My plan for the next video is I'm going to just create some exercises that you can use to test your knowledge of streams if you want them. I think we've covered all the most important aspects of Java streams in this short course now. If there's anything I've forgotten, do let me know in the comments and I may consider making more videos. And please don't forget, if you go to my site, caverprogramming.com, if you register free, you'll get access to a bunch of free courses. Thank you so much, and until next time, happy coding.